Hi, I'm Denchi, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install RetroArch on Arch Linux and how to also configure it and everything. It's an excellent program for emulation and doing a bunch of other things with video games that are a little bit older. So the first thing you can do is we'll install RetroArch and just do pacman-s RetroArch. However, that's not the full story because if you just install RetroArch, you won't get any UI elements or at least you won't get any working GUI or proper icons in the GUI and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is add an S at the bottom of next to this little command over here, so SS RetroArch, and it's going to list every single RetroArch package or package with the word RetroArch in it. And we should install all of these to get everything installed. And notice that it's part of the libretro group. So if you really want to, you can do sudo pacman-s libretro. That won't only install everything you need to get RetroArch running with a GUI as well, but also every single emulator you could possibly need. But I'm only going to need a couple of emulators. So I'm going to do sudo pacman-s retro arc and retro arc assets xmb over here assets ozone as well and assets glui so you want to install all of these and i'm going to need some kind of emulator so i want a nintendo 64 one so i'm going to do lib retro movement 64 plus next all right, so press enter. Yeah, and that will install everything you need. So that's installed. I already had those packages in my cache, so it didn't download them. It might take a while to download because it's 88 megabytes. But anyway, now if you run the RetroArch command, you'll see that RetroArch will launch with the GUI. It will create our config file in our home directory and everything. And we'll be able to move around the UI. We can use our mouse, but I don't really recommend that. You should plug in a controller, but for now, I'll just use my arrow keys, X to select something, and Z to go back. So we can load our one existing core, so this movement 64 plus next, so press A to load that and if I want to load content I can just go to my desktop and I have a nice little Mario 64 ROM here press A on that and that should load up uh, yeah there is Super Mario 64 and there is Mario 64 but that's not all we really want to do might want to do other things we do want to do a couple of things to make this whole process a little bit easier so we'd have to always load the core and load the content but we can automate that that's where going to the online updater can help now if you don't touch any of this and you go to something like import content and and scan a directory, so for example, let's say my desktop, and I want to scan this directory for, I don't know, ISO files, and all it finds is that one Mario 64 file. We'll go back, and as you can see, it's it's not anywhere here, despite the fact they just scanned it in. That's because we don't have a database of video games, and we need to actually get that. So we can go to main menu, online updater, update databases. So once again, using X to select those options, and there it is. So now, if we go back to import content, and we go to scan directory over here, we're gonna go to desktop and scan it again. This time, we go back, and as you can see, there's a Nintendo 64 icon, and it shows up with Mario 64, but the uh, thumbnail isn't there. We can go to main menu again, online updater, and we can update the playlist thumbnails. There you go, and it will download that one, and then we can go here, and as you can see, look, there's a little Mario 64 thing. So we click that, and we can launch it and everything. There is one more thing I do wanna cover. It's control controller setup. Now the first time you plug in something like a controller, I'm going to just plug in an Xbox one at the moment. Get this up here and plug it in. You'll notice that, well, it detects it, but nothing happens when I do anything on the controller because we haven't actually set up the controls. So I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go all the way down to input. We're going to go down here to port one control. It's a little bit odd with how it manages it. And now we're going to, we can set all these up. So press bottom key for this and go down and set this key for that, go down and set that key for that and do this and basically just set everything up. So I've set all of this up, so now I'm using my controller to input everything. And that's pretty much it, besides a couple of caveats to look at when it comes to Arch Linux. If I try to go here and go to the online updater and download content via this, let's say I wanted to install the Game Boy Engine. Yeah, you can't really do that in this. The only way to get new cores is to well, open up the terminal and actually install them manually. So do sudo pacman s well s s s lib retro and it will list every single lib retro thing you can do. So if I want to install, let's say I don't know something for SNES, I would do this and maybe pipe it to grep and search for uh, SNES. Those are all the ones I can get. So let's do sudo pacman s lib retro dash snes 9x for example and there you go that's my snes 9x core installed you don't install things via the retroarch interface as you would on other devices or on windows or whatever you do it via the terminal because these are packages in it so that's the one thing that i found a little bit confusing when using it for the first time so anyway that was just a short little tutorial because i always forget how to do this every time i do it i'm super confused as to 
Oh my god, where did I get the assets? Why isn't my database is loading and stuff? It's because I forgot to do the steps in this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.